One of the most famous and best themed movies of all time is one called The Big Short. For those who haven't seen it, basically what happens is there's this guy called Michael Burry who in 2008 predicted that the stock market would crash. He shorted stocks and he made a lot of money. Why am I telling you this? Because the same guy, Michael Burry, thinks we are in a similar position to that of 2008 and that there is a good chance of a stock market crash. This is what he said. He said passive investments are inflating stock and bond prices in a similar way to that of collateralized debt obligations, CDOs, did for subprime mortgages more than 10 years ago. Like most bubbles, the longer it goes on, the worse the crash will be. Okay, what I first want to do is go over the situation in 2008. What caused this stock market crash? Then I'm going to show you how this is very similar to that of the time that we are in now, late 2019. And what we'll finish off with is where are the opportunities in today's market? Because no matter what market condition, there is always opportunity to make money. So what was going on in 2008 and how does this compare to what is going on today, late 2019? Essentially, there's four key parallels. These four key parallels, it's very important that you pay attention to. Okay, in 2008, first you had something called houses. I'm sure you know what a house is. These are things that people live in. In order to buy a house, most people have to borrow money. This is called getting a mortgage. And yes, you normally get a mortgage from a place called a bank. And what the banks do with these mortgages, with these loans, is they rate them based on how risky they are. Triple A being the least risky, and going down the alphabet, the more risky. Then they sell these loans on to other investors. But this is where the first part of things starts to come along. The same thing happened in 2008 that is happening now, and it's called greed. The banks got greedy and they started issuing loans to basically anyone who wanted them. And they would sell them on to investors who were also greedy and wanted high interest returns. But here comes the second important parallel, and that is lack of understanding. Okay, you see the investors buying these subprime mortgages did not really understand the value and risk of what they were buying into. So they used their emotions, they saw high interest rates, and they got greedy, but they didn't understand the value of what they were getting into. So what did all of this mean? Well, it meant basically anyone who wanted to get a loan and buy a house could buy one. What did this do to house prices? You don't need to be a genius to work it out. It created a bubble. And that's the third key thing that happens. And the fourth key thing, what happens to all bubbles? They pop. So it started with greed combined with a lack of understanding. It caused a bubble. And what a surprise that bubble popped. But how does this relate to what is going on in today's stock market? So basically, what we've had for the last 10 or so years is a massive bull market. Stocks are up uh, almost 300%. And you know, one of the factors that has caused this market to go up by so much is something called passive investing. Investing in things like index funds. As Michael Burry pointed out, trillions of dollars in assets globally are indexed to stocks. And so you've got more and more people investing in index funds and they start to get greedy. They see the investments going up, so they buy more. And everyone around them does the same. None of them really understand the value of the stocks that they are buying into. Because they're all in index funds. They're a group of stocks. You're not analyzing the individual stocks. So you've got the first principle, where they get greedy. But this is also combined with the second principle, lack of understanding. That's a very bad combination. And essentially what happens when these two meet, greed and lack of understanding, a bubble starts to form. I'll take you back to what Michael Burry said before. This is very important. Passive investments are inflating stock and bond prices in a similar way to that of CDOs did for subprime mortgages more than 10 years ago. He says like most bubbles, the longer it goes on, the worse the crash will be. So at the moment, we've hit the three stages, similar to that of 2008. We just have not had that pop yet.
But you see, the key thing in today's bubble is something called index funds. And I just want to explain this a little bit further. What is an index fund? Index funds are mutual funds that are designed to track the returns of a market index. An index is a group of stocks that represents a particular market segment or overall market. So you can get an index fund that tracks the Chinese market, you can get one that tracks the USA market, or one that tracks dividend stocks in the USA. One of the most famous index funds is one called the S&P 500. This is basically just 500 very large companies in the United States and essentially it tracks the overall US market. But the problem with index funds is that they are a group of individual stocks, not just individual stocks. Why is this a problem? <laughs> well because investors in index funds do not understand the value of each stock in that fund. They just put their money in the fund as a whole and Burry in this next quote that I'll show you explains why this is a big problem. He says, this is very much like the bubble in synthetic asset backed CDOs before the great financial crisis in that price setting in that market was not done by fundamental security level analysis. Okay, so they were not analyzing individual stocks, but what it was based on was massive capital flows based on Nobel approved models of risk that proved to be untrue. Put simply, investors do not understand the true value of what they are investing in. And if you have investors all around the world investing like this, they all copy one another. They see the fund's price going up. They keep investing. What this does is it inflates stock prices. It causes a bubble. One day this bubble will pop and this is why Michael Burry says when the massive inflows into passive vehicles reverse, it will be ugly. Okay, I don't want to leave you guys on a sour note. What we now need to talk about is where are the opportunities today in this current stock market. So, where is the man, Michael Burry, the guy who seems to make money in every market, where does he see opportunities these days? Essentially, there's two key things I want to go over. First, it's small cap stocks. Burry has said that there is a lot of value in the small cap space within technology and technology components. He says, I'm a big believer in the continued growth of remote and virtual technologies. And you might ask, okay, why is there value in small cap stocks? Ahead, of larger cap companies? Well, that's a very easy question. Again, it's to do with index funds. You see, index funds tend to focus on the biggest companies in the market. The S&P 500, for example, is 500 very large USA companies. And with everyone investing in the large companies through index funds, obviously they go up dramatically in price. However, what this leaves behind when it comes to price is the smaller cap companies. And that's why there's opportunities there. And you know, Michael Burry owns several small cap companies with total values below $1 billion. He owns shares in Sportsman Warehouse, the outdoor sporting goods retailer, market cap just over 200 million. He owns Tailored Brand Stock, the men's apparel store, total value about 250 million. And I know some of you might think, oh, these aren't small cap. But yes, if you look at the definition, they are actually under small cap size companies. Compared to the likes of blue chip companies like Apple and Google, they just don't compare in size. So there's the first opportunity that Michael Burry sees in today's market. Small cap companies, they offer value and they offer cheaper prices as well. The next big opportunity that is available to investors, and I would feel bad if I did not mention it, is the Japanese market. There is a lot of undervalued companies in Japan. Burry says, it is not hard in Japan to find extreme undervaluation, low earnings multiples, or low free cash flow multiples. In many cases, the company might have significant cash or stock holdings that make up a lot of the stock's price. So with a lot of Japanese companies, just the cash alone makes up the entire price of the stock, almost. That is crazy, and you would never find something like that in the USA. Uh, if you did, it would be extremely rare. 
Uh, if you want to know some specific areas to look deeper into, you could, if you wanted to, look deeper into Tasmo and Nippon pillar packaging. Uh, Buri says this, he says, the global retracements in semiconductor display and related industries has hurt the shares of related smaller Japanese companies tremendously. I expect companies like Tasmo and Nippon Pillar Packaging, uh, another holding of mine, to rebound with high beta to the sector uh, as the inventory of tech components is finished off and growth resumes. So those are some opportunities to look and analyze deeper into. Anyway, I want to sum this up simply for you guys. Back in 2008, some bad things happened. Banks and investors got greedy with loans. There was a lack of understanding of the value of those loans. A bubble happened in the market and then pop. It appears the same thing is happening today. Investors are investing passively and greedily into index funds without truly understanding the value of the stocks in it. At least Bury thinks that we are in a bubble in today's market which could pop. But there is still opportunity available in certain individual stocks, especially when it comes to the small cap market, and for those that are interested, the Japanese market as well. Because in any market, there is always ways to make money.